Behind the Brand features the people who are making things happen. Get the insight to grow your biz from experts who've done it. Get Behind the Brand. Sponsored by Raven Internet Marketing Tool. I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with Director of Marketing for Kawasaki, Chris Brule. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Brian. You bet. So it's a custom that I ask my guests first off. How did you get this job, Chris? Actually, I, I've been in the business for, uh, let's see, about 15 years prior, and then I was invited over by a former vice president of sales here at Kawasaki, and he said, Chris, you've been on the agency side for a while. Would you ever think of coming to Kawasaki and helping me out? But I stepped back and thought it'd be a lot of fun to actually experience it from the other side of the table where you get to make some decisions, good or bad. Agency guy on, now on the client side, tell us about that transition and, and how you waded through some of the difficult times. Tell us about the challenges, the opportunities, and then maybe give us a perspective of how that's different now. It's never easy going client side from the agency. And for a couple of reasons. One is credibility. Um, one day you're servicing the business, next day you're a decision maker. People are like, they, they remember you as the agency person. Right. So you go from serving the brand, from being an outsider, they like to use the term vendor. I never liked the evil V word because a vendor is someone that puts soda pop in a so yeah. soda machine. You're a marketing partner yeah. giving strategic help. But now you're on client side. Uh, that, was, that was a challenge for me because some of the people uh, in the building had, had a hard time with that because, well, now we're equals before mm -hmm. you serve my needs. Maybe you don't always get the, the best support right away. You have to prove yourself. And yeah. I think that is with any job. So even if I didn't come from the agency, it helped me because I knew the names. I knew where, who, who worked where. I, I knew where the restrooms were. But you had to buy credibility. You had to really pay your dues and show that you're sold out on the brand. You're not just some person selling advertising. Right. Okay, Chris, now that you're inside here at Kawasaki, what are you going to do with our brand? How are you going to grow it? And it's not, and it's not just advertising. That's just one tool in the toolbox. Sure. Big challenge. And that credibility, it took about five years to earn credibility. And here's the other thing. You never stop earning it. You're only as good as your last at bat. You constantly have to prove it. And you have to perform. And you, and you have to have a passion, not only for the products, but a passion for marketing. Yeah. So if, it, sure, you have some good days or bad days, but you can never mail it in. So you're always, you always gotta be pinning it. Do you read blogs on a regular basis? You need to, yeah. You're scraping them, find out what people are saying about us, good or bad. Oh, so you're, you're looking for and you're listening for Kawasaki-related stuff, or are you researching other blogs and just to get information? I look, at it, I, look, I look at it this way. Say I roll out of the rack in the morning, it's about five something in the morning, I probably sent off a few emails to some of our agency partners, check this out, check that out. But I realize the whole world of the internet, let's be broad, is almost a dashboard of learning. Mm -hmm. I have so many places I can go to learn. Think of it as that you're at uh, Langley, CIA, and imagine you're in the in the Situation Room, right? Yeah. And they have all these computer monitors up, and they're monitoring all this stuff going on in the world. Well, you want to know something? We have the same thing, and it's free. And it's right on my handheld device, right on my MacBook Air. I could search out so many places. There's so much information there. Yeah. In fact, there's probably too much. How do we aggregate all that data and actually turn it into learning? Yeah. But the customers are constantly telling us what they think of us 24 seven. Sure. You jump on one of our 316,000 Facebook fans, they're telling us what they think of our new product launch. They're telling us right now, you could go onto YouTube, read the comments of what they thought about our video. Sure. Uh, you could go on and measure a lot of the data. We work with IBM, it's called Core Metrics. They're, they're monitoring traffic to our sites. They're telling us, they're, they're, the answers are right in front of us. Yeah. The challenge is self-motivating and going out there and going to reach for that and learning. And then taking that back going, wow, how does this meet my need? So it takes a lot of self-motivation to do it. And the minute I start relying too much maybe on an agency partner or, or a colleague, then I start getting myself in a dangerous box to where I'm just administrating. Sure. You can't. And then you're so reliant on this other person. And do they have all the answers? No. 
So you have to be an enthusiast of learning, I guess is really the, the theme I'm trying to say. And that means you're outworking not just your colleague, you're actually outworking the people at, in our case, the competition. Because there's another guy, just like me, that has the same tools. So I have to be smarter, and you have to be dedicated. Okay. Very dedicated. Tell me, like, the last book that you read. Oh my gosh, I think I have like six or seven books going on right now. Uh, they're, they're all in all of my uh, iPhone right now. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm reading uh, I Was, which is Wozniak, big mm -hmm. Steve Jobs fan. I finished um, The Presentation Skills of Steve Jobs. Uh, I think I have four Seth Godin books that I'm still working through, haven't finished Lynchpin. I want to find out, I'm a big nonfiction guy. Yeah. I want to learn about what really happened or is really happening Yeah. because I want to learn. And now that you know you got them on your iPad, you could highlight them sure. and you could send yourself the notes and little tidbits. So I'm a collector of little insights. How about traditional media? Are you watching much TV lately? Um, do you read the newspaper? Do you read magazines aside from industry pubs? Sure, sure. What do you, what do you like? Well, what I try to do, I'll consume as much as I can in the industry, but the learning also happens outside this yeah. industry. That's what I'm curious yeah, about is definitely. where are you going outside? Because you know, inside, when you're eating, drinking, breathing the brand, you're a bit in a vacuum. You don't always That's true. You don't always know. So That's true. it's great that you can go outside. Give us an example of some of those places that you're, you're going um, to outside. I'm still a, 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 a child of traditional media. I mean, I still, I'm the guy that will be going to the magazine rack. I cried when Borders closed, even though yeah. I'm all about the new media. Um, so I, I'll personally buy off the rack Sports Illustrated, okay. just because. Okay, so that's you know that's for for my own edification. But I will um, go out and consume the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, so on and so forth. So to get my news, and I'll, I find myself actually I'll roll into Starbucks and read them before I'll actually read it on the iPad app. Okay. But I'm actually under, wanting to understand what's going on in the auto industry. I understand what's going on, obviously, with all the Mac forums because yep. of the creativity that goes on in there. Okay. Maybe I, I, I'm not a big Final Cut Pro guy, but I want to learn what's going on in technology. But I'll also, sure, I'll be on Ad Age and Ad Week, but I also want to find out what's going on in the bigger brands. So I'm, I'm following, sure, the Apples, the Starbucks, the IBMs, the big three. I want to know what's going on at Porsche, BMW. And then I'll yeah. step completely out of that. Then there's the entertainment industry. Because I look at it this way. We're not just selling bikes, and our, and our tagline is let the good times roll. We're yeah. selling fun. So that means I'm competing against movies yeah. as well. I'm competing against other entertainment. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm actually watching what's going on with Amazon, how they're doing business. Yeah. And, and we mentioned the demise of Borders. I'm, I'm paying attention to what put Circus City out of business. What has got Borders completely out of business, yeah. Barnes & Noble next. Yeah. Why are things blowing up the way they are? So uh, give us an idea of, of um, maybe your marketing mix. If we want to break it down traditional, non-traditional, what percentage? Give us an idea how you're mixing things up. And it depends what product I'm selling. But if you take it overall, I would say well over 75% of our marketing mix is in word of mouth engagement. Like? And I would say social, mobile, Demo event. Well, demo, isn't that old school? Try, try the bike, ride it, and buy it? Yep. That's a traditional media, but it's done in a new way. We're going out to right where these people ride. I think they call it experiential now. There you go. That's exactly <laughs> where I was going. Yeah. So let's drill down deeper into social. So you're spending quite a bit of money or quite a bit of resources and, and time and effort on the social space or the non-traditional. Where are you spending money? Are you, spending, are you buying Facebook ads? What are you doing specifically? Or is it developing apps? Tell us more about that. Well, what's nice about social media is it's essentially free. Sure, we pay our agency partners to monitor and post content and create the content to put up on social. But as far as a medium, it doesn't cost us anything to monitor and maintain our own. Are you using specific tools to monitor the social? Sure. And if so, can yeah. you share those? Yeah, Radiant 6 is, is the one that we have right now. Okay, Radiant 6 is acquired by Salesforce. And then Core Metrics, which was bought by IBM. Okay. Yeah. So we'll monitor that. But for us, um, we're, we're media neutral, meaning that whatever tool that is available to us to connect, we're going to use it. So we're trying to be at the forefront of this industry of those tools. So yes, Facebook's there. YouTube is there. 
Tumblr. We just started that a couple of weeks ago. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be wed to any one tool. Sure. I mean, so, I mean, we want to be able to engage. And again, it depends what product we're talking about. So we have to, yeah. you know, mix or match. So what are you guys doing with mobile apps? Are you guys developing stuff for Facebook, for mobile platforms? What are you doing? Well, we're looking at every tool that's available, as, as I was mentioning. Uh, let's hit iPad right off the bat. And we consider ourselves right now a market leader in that. We've been working with, with the iPad for, well, since it came out, the 2010 version, the yeah, iPad 1 now, we're on the 2. And we knew right away that this thing is more than just a toy. It could be a tool for us. So we've been working with local dealers here in Southern California and built a, a beautiful application that it's actually a mobile application that can be downloaded straight onto the iPads. And we tested it out. So what it basically is, is at the swipe of a finger, it's all the product information that you need, okay. all the product videos that you need, all the product imagery showing actual video of the product in use. So you don't need a brochure anymore. You don't even need a brochure. Now, some might say, well, that's nice. It's just a brochure on steroids. It's way more than that because, hey, Brian, you come on in. Any information that you need, I capture information. While we're talking, I'm already emailing you a digital brochure if you want a brochure that you could print out. And then on top of that, I'm capturing information. I knew that you came in, wow, he's interested in that Ninja ZX6R sport bike. I'm going to follow up with you probably within a couple hours after leaving. Brian, thanks for visiting the shop. This is Chris from blah, 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 motorcycle shop, and you were interested in the Ninja 6. By the way, here's some more information, and you get a nice personalized message from me, and all the other information that you need on that bike above and beyond the brochure. Cool. And then I'm able to remember you as a lead, so in a couple of days or even a week, I know that you visited, date, time, and you're interested in 6, I'm going to follow up with you. And what's also nice about this tool that we're working with our dealers nationwide, that we're also going to be using it for all of their other sales uh, information and tools. So in essence, to, to be brief, this iPad is pretty much the only tool ultimately a dealer is going to need to do business with Kawasaki. Sure. So all the back office. So that's, that's our vision for this tool. And then when it comes to mobile, yeah, we played around with QR codes, but for us, SMS is still huge. Simple messaging. So you'll walk into a dealership, there's a KX450F dirt bike. And right there it says, for more information, text KX450F to 868-727. You could do that for real for mm -hmm. viewers at home. And then boom, it pops. You're linked right into the mobile website. All the information that you want, all the specs, all the features, all the videos, all the photos, right there, right in the palm of your hand. And yeah. what's nice about this, for a person that's on the showroom, a dealer or a salesperson, they could walk a customer through either the iPad or on their handheld device all the information you need. So it's really a silent salesperson right in your hand. So mobile itself, too, that we're pushing a whole lot of information. So obviously you could get our Facebook site on there. You could get Kawasaki.com, the mobile version. So anywhere you go, you got Kawasaki right in your pocket or the palm of your hand 24-7. Our, all, not all our dealerships are open seven days a week. Sure. But Kawasaki is right in the palm of your hand. So we know that people are shopping anytime. We want to be there for them as well. I see you guys, I see the Kawasaki brand as a real innovator, someone who's partnered up like no one, no other brand or no other motorsports brand with outside partners. You know, you have the energy drink category, you have even action sports category where you've aligned yourself with these either cross promotional partners or other alliances. Um, you guys are kind of the first to do that, weren't you? I don't know about first, but we're really happy with our partnership with Monster Energy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they sponsor our race team. In fact, uh, one of the key executives over Monster Energy used to be my boss here at Kawasaki in, in marketing. Um, and he's done a fabulous job, not only here, but over there. So there's a nice connection. Yeah. And obviously, the lime green, the color green is huge. But what's great about Monster as a partner is that they're into action sports. Yeah. And that's the lifeblood of Kawasaki, especially when it comes to our dirt bikes and KXs, and we've been very successful. And it's a youth brand, Monster. So is Kawasaki. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's energy. It's being alive in the industry. They sell energy, excitement, and fun. So do we. So it's a good match. It's, it's, a, it's a fabulous match. Who, else is, who are some of the other partners? We also play uh, with our friends at Dub, Dub Magazine and the Dub Events. Um, which is really, really big in the urban market. And what's really cool about Dubs is, 
you know, it, people are into, into cars. Well, the people that are into cars love to be into bikes, and the people that are into bikes love to be into cars. These are the guys that are customizing their sport bikes. Absolutely. And just pimping it out. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, they definitely embrace not just the urban market, of course, but as I was talking about Monster, they, they embrace just being out there, wearing the brand it, it's it's a lot it's alive yeah really is so that's one of our other brands and then we have a, a great partnership maybe in a little smaller way with uh with nascar with uh, richard childress team owner very successful um he's got several cars uh, in the chase right right now and uh, he, he's been a enthusiast of our brand for gosh going on 15 years so he'll do some some partnerships with us on four wheel our mule mule utility and terex brands so. nice yeah, it's really cool. The products aren't that different. No, they're right? not. So what is it specifically that has been your competitive advantage? What, can you put your finger on it? I mean, you got, it's been amazing, your, your ride from down here to, to up here now, and it's remarkable. How have you done it? We actually work in an industry that has a lot of similarities in products, absolutely. But there's a lot of things that our customers know that is inherently different about our products than maybe the competition. If you talk to a Kawasaki enthusiast, they'll say there's something about a Kawasaki product that has this raw aggression, raw power. It's like a punch in the face of raw power. And it's us that actually are gonna bring that out in marketing and show it to them, number one. So there is a difference in our brand. Our friends back in Japan will call that the Kawasaki difference, and we're gonna show that. Do you think because you're a little bit smaller than some of these other OEMs, that you're a little bit more nimble, you can move faster, quicker to market? I, I don't think it, 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 it's size. I think, as I was saying earlier, is that we made a commitment to work harder. Okay. We're gonna outwork the competition. We're not gonna, we're approaching it completely from the customer back. I mean, we're truly, cons we're trying to be truly consumer centric to where we're partnering with the customer and the dealer. Okay. It's, it's actually a humble position and realizing that no, we don't have all the answers. No, we don't have all the possible resources, but man, we're gonna outwork the guy next door to us. Okay. And we're gonna try to embrace every possible tool. We're, we're, not, we're not sitting still. It, it's that hunger and that desire to outwork and, and, and not to be focused so much on what the competition's doing. Yeah. It, it's, it's, looking at, it's looking ahead. That's what I'm getting from this. It sounds like you guys are not focused on the periphery or whatever the people, you guys are focused on your strategy, your plan, your customer, and you're working that plan. Yeah, uh, absolutely. How do you want people to see you? Are you a scrapper? Are you a survivor? Are you an innovator? Tell us how you want to be seen. What I want to be able to be remembered as is being real and being human and being authentic and actually being introspective. And then also one of my, my few gifts is maybe a little bit of foresight and being able to actually look through and notice, hey, it isn't so easy and, and put our arm around of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my biggest things because I remember what it was like not getting a lot of support and I want to be one of those people that will give the support because sometimes a good idea could come from anywhere and whether it's a junior most person or a senior most person and being inclusive. Are you a nurturer? I would say overall, yeah, because I know what it's like to be the outside. I know what it's like to be the junior person and I want to be inclusive. Sure, I may have the call at the end of the day, but I realize we're all in the same boat rowing. Yeah. Have you guys played around with humor at all? Uh, what, do you, what do you find that really resonates with your people? You tried a, lot of, a few different message styles? Uh, not so much humor, uh, though humor is a, it can be a great motivator. I mean, we're selling entertainment fun. We want people to, to be jaw-dropping. Oh, that's cool. I mean, we're selling sexy sport bikes, let's just say. Yeah. People want to see that thing in action and go, that's cool. So we want to up our game on it to be engaging and entertaining. So for instance, if we're selling our high-end sport bike, you know, smoking that tire, it's just dragging. Which is, what is People your high-end really sport cool. bike right now? Uh, Ninja ZX-14R. Okay. 1400 cc's of all-out aggression that's just racing all the way through. Where does that compete with, like the Hayabusa or uh, something? Suzuki Hayabusa, okay. yep. I mean, it's big on drag racing as well. 
legal drag racing. Sure, of, of course. course. But we're selling the excitement. We want people to have their hair stand on edge. So, yeah. I mean, that's the bar. Because these enthusiasts, they just want to go and have an awesome time. Right. How about the dirt bike guys? What do they want? They want a bike that's going to perform in the dirt, obviously. It's around a circuit. It's around a track, for those that don't know. They want, they're competing against themselves and someone else. So they're trying to have quicker lap times. So they want the best suspension. They want the best engine. They want the best overall experience that they possibly can. And those bikes, whether they're KX dirt bikes or the Ninja Sport bikes, those are high performance. Sure. And every year, you gotta have a little bit more than the competition. And our marketing's gotta show how this bike will help them beat their own lap time. Yes. Yeah. How about the side-by-side -side guys? You have the Terex. We do, the new Terex 4, four-seater. You could go out and have fun. And it looks that, like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, and that th that product is uh, off-road rated, meaning that it's tested in the most extreme in, in environments, and people ride these things. It's like a little really doom it, it, it goes above and beyond a doom buggy. It'll smoke a doom buggy, but yes, that, that kind of mentality. It'll take some crazy terrain, Almost. Who buys that terrain. thing? Is it families? Is families, it it's, it's big. You know, yeah. off-road enthusiasts like yourself, you'll go out with a buddy or, you know, you'll take a family out there and have a good time and, and seat in four and you're driving. Mm -hmm. You're enjoying the environment, but you're also enjoying the actual experience of going over some pretty incredible terrain. So, Chris, do you have a superpower, something we don't know about you personally that uh, maybe My own share belief in the Lord Jesus Christ who gets me through each day, there is that, but that's probably too much for the film. That's my superpower. Well, that's okay. I mean, sharing your faith uh, may be a big part of your life, and that's, that's important. Well, y you do have to have a base, and it is my faith. And yes, there are some days that are less than positive, and when you come home, come home you have your family and you have your faith, because that, that is the inner power that gets you through the day. Because if you go on your own power, you're gonna run out of gas. And actually, the other superpower that we have is knowing that I have a pretty strong, dynamic team here at Kawasaki and agency side. These people are insanely creative and have even more energy than I have, and I'm already pinning it myself. These people are incredibly talented, and what's really cool about it, it is one giant family. And maybe one day I'm not up, but they're gonna pick me up and vice versa. And it truly is a family. Like if you got to see Kawasaki here, the marketing group at work with its agencies, you're gonna see a lot of people that are laughing, having a good time, insanely busy yeah. um, and doing some crazy work under some crazy deadlines, but we're really, truly having fun. Because we're hard. selling fun. Work hard, play hard. Well, it is, but if you're not having fun at work, it's gonna show in the output. Yeah. And if you see there are content that's out there, I think you're gonna see some content that is pretty motivating, is a lot of fun. It's because we're having fun doing it. And we're looking for people with those personalities that are, hey man, I'll work some crazy hours, but I'm having a good time doing it. Very good. We're selling good times. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, sharing us uh, some of your words of wisdom. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. This Behind the Brand episode is brought to you by Raven Internet Marketing Tools. Powerful data and tools for online marketers. Get a free trial at raventools.com slash behind.